Hi there. So uh, these are strange and uncertain times we're in right now and, and because things are just so completely out of the ordinary I thought I would um, do a video recording. Um, normally my tendency would be to write a blog post but uh, it just feels like some human connection maybe a, a, a f seeing my face might be a, a good thing right now when we're we're entering a time when we're probably beginning to be hungry for connection. So consider this me um, sitting down in your living room to have a little chat and offer up some of my thoughts about on, on what's going on. And um, I've been thinking a lot about this. My um, It's been tumultuous for all of us and, and we all have these varying levels of capacity to be with what is right now, to be in this discomfort and this um, not knowing what's being asked of us, not knowing what the world is is asking of us and our families need, etc. So um, first of all, I just want to speak solidarity. I'm, I'm in it too. I'm, um, you know, these waves of anxiety and, and uh, uncertainty are, are present for all of us. and. Um, some of you know my daughter had surgery yesterday and so that was a bit of an anxious time to be in the hospital but things are settling into a new normal she's doing okay and and today we're celebrating her birthday so there's such a mixture of the emotions from from the fear and the you know just deep uncertainty and into celebrating and being with family and and uh, finding new ways to connect so um I just wanted to talk a little bit about one of the concepts I teach in my program around holding space and I think this is a really important concept right now for what we're dealing with and that's the concept of liminal space. So the liminal space uh, comes from an anthropological term limin and limin means the space in between. And anthropologists developed this term um, when they started talking about ceremonies and rituals where there was a space in between what once was and what is emerging, what is yet to come. And, and an example of this would be a ritual around a coming of age, for example, when somebody would be sent into a, on a vision quest to mark their coming into adulthood. They, the time in between their youth and their adulthood when they were in the woods, in the wilderness, is the liminal space, the limin between two stories. And I just have this sense that the whole world is entering into this liminal space right now. There's this old story of who we were and what we were, and then coronavirus is recreating the world in this way that we don't know what it will be. And um, something new will emerge but we don't know what will emerge. And in the meantime, there is a great deal of fear, anxiety, some trauma. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And, and we're now beginning to see some, also some creativity and resourcefulness and resilience, but all of this is mixed together in this space. And so I have this diagram that I use to define the liminal space. And I'm not quite sure if this is gonna show up backwards or forwards for you, but I may, um, drop it into the video in a different way if it doesn't quite work. So this is the journey that I see through liminal space. One of the ways that I talk about liminal space is used the metaphor of the caterpillar that transforms into a butterfly. Now the caterpillar is, you know, going through life doing what it pleases or what it's called to do, really eating and, you know, and, and crawling around on the, on the ground or on, on trees. And at some point, the caterpillar has a sense that something new is going to emerge for it. And the caterpillar must surrender its old self, its caterpillar self, to become something new, but it doesn't know what that is. And the only way for that transformation to happen is to go through this liminal space, which is the chrysalis, which is a place, they say, inside a chrysalis, it's just a gel-like gooey substance that has no resemblance to the caterpillar and yet no resemblance yet to the butterfly. So it's this space of nothingness. But in the meantime, we have to go through this journey of transforming. And I use the spiral to talk about this because we spiral through so many different emotional states in this time. And I, 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 I'm a sensing, uh, I s suspect it's the same for you as it's been for me. There's so much 
you know, one moment I'll be in fear and then the next moment I'll, I'll find some stillness and then I'll, you know, the, again, the fear comes back and that's a bit of that spiral of just moving through the emotional states, trying to get to this place of stillness, rest and trust. And, but there has to be some surrender in that, to be in that place of, okay, something new is coming. I don't know what's coming, but I'm going to lean into this space of trust. And eventually there's a coming out and a spiraling out and the butterfly emerges and we don't know what the butterfly looks like. And I realize this is a limited metaphor because the butterfly might not look like a beautiful thing. And there might be times when it feels like what's transforming, what's changing is changing us into something that's, that doesn't feel as light and beautiful as a butterfly. But there is change nonetheless, there's transformation. And so we have to choose to be present for this journey and do whatever we can to be in that journey in as peaceful a way as we can so that we can be transformed by it and not avoid the journey itself. And there's another part of what I teach, it's called the bypass. If you see this dotted line, that's what we attempt to do to uh, to miss all of the pain and the discomfort and sometimes the bypass looks like our addictions or just numbing out or you know all of these things all all of these things which may sometimes be uh, good things I mean it's not a bad thing necessarily to check out with Netflix etc but when we get into this place of just completely numbing out and not actually processing the stuff that we're going through then then it may become a bypass instead of um, helping us through that journey and um so i want i i just want to offer that up and let and and hope that it is some some value to reflect on that i've been reading another uh, liminal space another metaphor that i sometimes talk about when it comes to the liminal space to enter into the place of an unknown is the ocean because the ocean if you leave the land you go into this place of complete unknown where you don't know what's coming or how you'll get there and the storms may come and you might be get beat up along the way and you're hoping on the other side is another landmass. Um, I've been reading this really great book. Where did I put it? <laughs> this book, Wayfinders, The Wayfinders, and I'll put a link to it after this uh, video by Wade Davis. And it talks about the Polynesian uh, the settling of the Polynesian islands and they've contemplated for many many years how the Polynesian islands were settled by people because there's you know they're hundreds of kilometers apart and yet somehow there was this migration of people with really primitive um, you know boats or primitive and uh, maybe isn't the right word but boats that are not to the technology we have now they they, they seem primitive and and they were the Anthropologists have done a lot of research trying to find out how did people navigate these islands and um, what they've discovered is and they there is has been this movement to bring back this understanding this learning is that there are people within the society who have this unique capacity for navigating the unknown spaces the, um, the sea the navigators who essentially become the ones who guide people through the liminal space and these navigators learn how to read the stars they know wh uh, during what time of the night a star is supposed to come up off above the horizon where on the horizon so they can tell directions based on the stars they know how to read the fish the if fish are behaving a certain way it means they're within a certain distance from the land if they see certain birds they know approximately how far the way they are from land because certain birds will fly 200 kilometers from land other birds will only fly 50 kilometers they even read if there's a bubble of air on the water they watch the bubble of air move past the boat and that tells them how fast they're moving in a certain direction so there's all but a, a navigator has to be able to see all of these signs and read them and be able to put all of that information together in order to navigate these unknown spaces the liminal space and I just found that fascinating to think about 
um, there are guides for us. And I, I wonder about now in this time of COVID-19, where are the wayfinders? Where are the guides that know how to navigate, that know how to read the signs and guide us through this really confusing uh, space? And to go to take this back to the butterfly metaphor, in a butterfly transformation, they say there are imaginal cells and the imaginal cells, even though everything else breaks down between the caterpillar and the butterfly, the imaginal cells, uh, they hold the vision of the future. So the imaginal cells are like the wayfinders. They guide the process and they, they, they have a wisdom that the rest of the cells don't have. The rest of the cells just trust the process, break down and then transform. And I think of these two things, the wayfinders and the imaginal cells, and it makes me think, A, we need to find the wayfinders in our society right now. Who are the ones that can guide us through this dark and, and uncertain time? And then also, where is the wayfinder in each of us that can guide us, that, that knows that, you know, the imaginal cell within us that we can trust, that we can lean into um, to have some hope for whatever is going to emerge on the other side. So I, I just want to honor everything you're going through. I am going through it too. We're all going through it collectively. And, um, I know it's going to be scary and there's going to be loss and there's going to be, um, you know, some things are not going to emerge the way we want it to, but there is definitely going to be some way that we will be transformed as a people if we walk through this. And I, and it's my hope and trust that we will build the communities that we need, that we'll find the wayfinders and the imaginal cells that we need in order to emerge into some new reality. Thank you.